in the recent history of mankind, and perhaps in the history of mankind in general, this has not happened ever. The Ukrainian nation at war has inspired the whole world with exceptional acts of bravery, from the battlefield to volunteering, diplomacy or economy. Good afternoon, it is Henry Keane on UATV channel explaining hard things in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. The West, along with our ally governments and conscious people around the globe, are all united in unprecedented support for Ukraine. Why? Some say it is happening despite Russia's brutal onslaught, but it is not quite the case. Ukraine remains united, defiant, determined, strong and resilient because of Russia's brutal onslaught. Because we have no other choice. We have no other homeland. We have no other nation, no other life to live. No other principles to profess by freedom of individual choice and unity as a nation and a hope that the world shares the same principles. And the world does, because it understands clearly it is an attack on all what we call civilization. The Ukrainians are absolutely astounding at learning new systems very quickly and putting them to good use, and even modifying them for uses that go beyond what, what we thought they were capable of. And that's one of the things that I think makes it so valuable for American equipment to be in Ukraine. The Ukrainians are also inventing a whole new way of war. And this is something that will absolutely, if, if the United States takes advantage of it, it will absolutely change the tactics, techniques, and procedures that the United States uses in battle. But no matter how obviously it is a duty for some of us, things are very likely to become an issue for others. The issue of supplying German tanks has not yet been resolved. Ukrainian diplomacy will make efforts to eventually convince Berlin to change its position. We're not just waiting, of course. It is important that Kiev has already agreed on the start of training of Ukrainian crews for Leopard 2 tanks, so the most precious of resources, the time, will not be lost. And I am absolutely not going to play an oracle or Alexei Ristovich here and give advice to our leadership. But maybe we just have to do it in the Ukrainian way. To let the worst happen, to let the world see our bravery, unity and self-determination? Maybe when Mr. Scholz will have no choice, he will make a proper one? Maybe Vladimir Putin can convince the General Chancellor of Germany? Maybe when Mr. Scholz sees Russian tanks entering Europe, he will pick up the phone and tell the proper words the whole world is expecting him to say, like now or maybe not. If Germany blocks the transfers of Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine, a smaller coalition of countries that are ready to transfer their tanks to Kyiv will be created. Ukraine and Europe will win this war even without the participation of Germany. Mateusz Morawiecki, Prime Minister of Poland, in the interview with Polish press agency. The format of the tank coalition of Ukraine's partners without Germany is also discussed. There's strong support from Poland and the United States in addition to Leopard 2. Uh, Ukraine is also waiting for the United Kingdom to supply Challenger 2. And France is exploring the possibility of providing Leclerc. While Germany is hesitating, Morocco has transferred about 20 T-72B units to Ukraine that have been modernized in the Czech Republic. It is also a signal to other African countries. All in all, Rammstein 8 was very successful and will significantly strengthen Ukraine's resilience. Despite a bit of scholting, Germany announced a spring assistance package worth more than 1 billion euro, which will include modern IFVs, SPGs, SAMs, ammunition and military training. Defense Minister of Ukraine Alexei Reznikov has expressed satisfaction with the results of a Ukraine defense contact group meeting at Rammstein. The key words that mattered today are unity, timeliness, immediate assistance, strengthening of capability of the armed force of Ukraine, defense and security sector, further counter-offensive to release the occupied territories. Oleksiy Reznikov, Minister of Defense of Ukraine, in an interview with Voice of America. Minister also said that in addition to the military assistance announced for Ukraine, some packages were voiced behind closed doors. He marked it as inspiring, and that is why I am very satisfied, he said, just between us 
the minister and you, dear world, Ukrainian military have already arrived in the territory of the United States and started the process of training on Patriot air defense systems. Minister emphasized that we in Ukraine are preparing for a potential large-scale attack by Russia already this spring. Let us hope that behind those closed doors of Ramstein Air Base, they were talking about F-16s, Falcons, tanks, missiles and all those means of war much needed to make that ancient snake or a boris. The one that was recklessly biting its own tail, which is my own euphemism for an outdated monster of Soviet Russian Empire, to choke on its own tail and finally slip into oblivion, giving way to a new Ukraine, new Russia and a new world order in which there will be less room for mad dictators ready to burn the world in a nuclear fire when someone refuses to become his slave. The U.S. Treasury Department recognized the Russian private military company Wagner as a transnational criminal organization. The qualification of the Wagner PMC as a transnational criminal organization has every possible reason, given its illegal activities in Ukraine, Syria, the Balkans, Africa and other regions of the world, you name it. Wagner is a criminal tool of Russia's proxy war against the democratic world. And the word private in the name of the company, does not correspond to its essence. I mean, PMC Wagner is an oxymoron in general, since, in particular, Wagner does not correspond to renowned composer. Private to private, since Prigozhin publicly admitted that he lied when he spoke about his personal non-involvement in Wagner and admitted he received state funding. And company does not correspond to company since it is illegal even in Russia to hire inmates of penitentiaries as mercenaries. New sanctions against Russian inmates, oh, sorry, mercenaries, oh, sorry again, inmates or mercenaries, or oh, whatever. New sanctions against Wagnerites and those states that support PMC Wagner will strengthen the isolation of Russia. Actually, Wagner is a prime example of how official Moscow tolerates outright lawlessness, the cult of violence and criminal ethics. The new legal qualification of Wagner brings it closer to recognition by Washington as a terrorist organization and Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism, which is already a no doubt for us here in Ukraine. To call things what they actually are, Wagner PMC is a gang of armed criminals that is an essential component of the Russians' military formation in Ukraine, and that gives you, dear world, a clear signal. A spoon of shit in a barrel of honey makes it a barrel of shit. All Russian forces invading our homeland is a criminal gang that will be treated accordingly. A poor part of our world is ruled by thieves. Sorry, it's just a fact. The word kleptocracy means literally ruled by thieves, and describes the specific corruption that occurs when state leaders, generally from poorer countries, routinely loot millions of even billions of dollars from their national treasuries. All too often, the money is spent or stashed in, of course, rich countries of the West. And until very recently, rich countries of the West had no moral or legal obligation to do anything about these flows of dirty money. Partially, as a result of Russia's criminal invasion into Ukraine, democratic countries have now significantly increased their efforts in the fight against the international criminal networks of corrupt politicians who simply rob their countries and hide the stolen treasures. That's right in the West. But kleptocrats these days have become more resourceful, and also some countries don't ask too many questions, researchers say. Like the United Arab Emirates and Turkey have drawn particular attention amid increased Western sanction against Russia, said Jody Vittori of Georgetown University, who co-authored this study titled Kleptocratic Adaptation, Next Steps in the Fight Against Kleptocracy, which was presented Friday, 20th January, National Endowment for Democracy, NED, in Washington. As Vittori emphasized, both countries are listed by the International Anti-Money Laundering Group because they are actively involved in money laundering and because their financial systems can potentially be used by terrorists. You just couldn't describe Russia more accurately, Mrs. Vittori.
Not because there are potential channels of financing terrorism, but because the system is very open to it. With so many yachts, plans and things like that in both countries, there are a lot of education that it was a relatively hospitable place. At least they don't ask a lot of questions when Russian oligarchs and their money show up. Jody Vittori, professor on conflict and national security. But what does kleptocracy look like? Easy. It looks like Russia. Imagine a nation rich in natural resources. Multinationals vie with each other for government contracts to exploit these resources and, as the years go by, money, large sums of money, begins to pour into the state coffers. Per capita, GDP goes through the roof and skyrockets. Yet, mysteriously, the population, aside from the main rich cities, continues to live in poverty. Where are you wondering where Russian money has got to? Finding the answer is quite simple. Shift your attention to the world's financial capitals, London, New York, Geneva and their associated playgrounds, and search for the family name of its leader, and here we go. You read in a national newspaper that another Russian oligarch who just happens to be close Putin's friend is buying a $40 million mansion in London purchased alongside with a $30 million beach house in the south of France and a $50 million estate in Hamptons. The Instagram feed of oligarch's daughter features exotic holidays, designer handbags and private jets in New York, Another bidder, known to be close to the leader, is revealed to have spent more than $50 million on fine art and memorabilia at auction. And on those poor animals, children and terminally ill people around the globe, of course, those billions make you soft and so kind-hearted. What am I talking about is that you need no specific investigation. A simple and not too sophisticated following Russian money Doctrine demonstrates theft on a frankly unimaginable, mind-boggling scale. And now, also very much thanks to Ukraine, for the first time in history, there is an ongoing public consensus that for a state to host money stolen by an official of another state is morally wrong and legally should be very, very wrong. And I know what to do with all of it the Russian dragon's reaches invested into Ukraine to restore what the beast has destroyed. We will win the war. Then come over, dear world, and help us to thrive and prosper. It was Henry Keen on UATV explaining hard things in easy terms for you directly from Ukraine. Stay safe and tuned for more.